when it comes to the money that you've earned and worked so hard to get, don't be so quick to just throw it all away. Be critical. Welcome back everyone. Time to protect your money. Think critically and follow me along on this journey and we'll see where we all end up together in the comments section. We got March the Machine coming up. It's going to be epic, going to be fun. I know there's plot lines and holes in the story. I get all that, but I'm still excited for the set and so is a lot of a lot of other players. They've given us a little bit of a, a lag time between sets, gets the blood pumping, makes you want to open the wallet, start spending some cash. A lot of us can agree to that and some of us still won't agree and I, I get that as well. After that, we've got Aftermath, right? That smaller set. That's what we're here to talk about, the two sets here today. But I want to start you off on something before we get to that conversation, just to get your, your line of thinking to see where I'm going with this, okay? We'll see if you believe me at the end. When you take a look at a game like Fortnite, I remember my, my kid, Minimox, going over to my buddy's place and his son, who's a couple years older than mine, was playing Fortnite. And my son saw like Thanos and all these crazy Marvel characters. He's like, oh, I want to play this game so bad. It's so awesome. And when I researched it, I looked at all these little microtransactions, all these little ways of spending money like they do with most games nowadays to try to bring in more revenue. I remember playing games like World at War where you just paid the 60 bucks for the game and you got the whole game. Now you pay like $90 and there's all these little microtransactions. You can make 10 bucks for this and five bucks for this skin. You can get the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder skin. No matter how cool Rambo and Shredder and John McClane look, I never bought any. I don't get suckered in like that. I understand it's a game that's going to wear out after a year and be moved on to something else. But it's hard for people sometimes when they want something that bad, when they get that excited and built into something. And that's where we go with this story because I had to turn down the mini mocks. I had to explain what's going on. And now that he's older, yes, he plays Fortnite, but he realizes and understands I will never buy microtransactions. I will not dive in to the microtransaction market. If it's not part of the main product, I don't subscribe to it. I refuse to spend money on that stuff. If it was that way, they should have put it as part of the main product. Now let's bring things around and let me just give you the first slide. Microtransactions, sometimes abbreviated as MTX, are a business model where users can purchase virtual goods with micropayments. Microtransactions are often used in free-to-play games to provide a revenue source for the developers. While well, microtransactions are a, sta a staple of the mobile app market, they are also seen on PC software such as Valve's Steam Digital distribution platform as well as console gaming. But is it just in console gaming? Because I remember watching an episode of Big Bang Theory. They played that game of ka ah, uh, whatever they called it, right? And there was like expansion packs. And there were small expansion packs of like 30 cards for $29.99. And they, they could get like Billy the Kid and all. You remember, you probably remember the episode. If not, hey, you can go look it up on YouTube at this point. But that got me thinking too. All these things have been brewing in my head. And now we have March of the Machines. I know, March of the Machines. Now, that box is $159.95 Canadian. These prices today are in Canadian. If you're in the U.S. or overseas, wherever you are, you'll work out your own prices for this, but it's $159.95. The set size here is 260 cards. Now, if we look at other sets like Dominator United or some of the other sets out there, they're 271 280 You see where I'm going. You're probably already following along my plot in line now, and you're like, we know what you're talking about, Mox. We know. I know. Now we go to our next one, okay? And here is March the Machines, the Epilogue Boosters, the Aftermath. It's a set size of 50. There's 144.95, okay? There's only a 24 pack booster box and I'm not doing the collector boxes because they get even more ridiculous when you look at that. I'm just choosing the basic set. And the reason I'm doing that is you have to think when you look at that, when you look at those two together, do you actually see the products? The cards? What makes it special? Be critical. What makes it unique? It's your money that you are spending on these products. When I look at a draft box, it is a self-contained game other than the mana I might need. I can take those packs, I can draft them, play with friends, I could take individual cards out and build a deck. You can do things. The epilogue boosters, 
a supplementary micro set. Micro, micro transaction, micro set. You see where I'm going? You guys probably knew that all along. 50 cards, even if they're all new cards. 50 cards plus 260 makes it like a 310 card set. Couldn't they just put those two together? Let's face it, if they put them together, it's only 310 cards in the set. That's not the biggest set Wizards of the Coast has ever done, but there's a reason they chose to break it up, and that's because they get to utilize the cash flow on both fronts. A drop box for 159 and the epilogue boosters for 144.95, which means the combined price for these would be $304.90 plus tax here in Canada. And I understand, like I said, price would be different elsewhere, but think about that. The combined price of 304, like a premium product, Wizards of the Coast is finding any way they can to break things down with a form of shrinkflation. In this case, they're trying a micro transaction. They are trying to separate out a micro transaction like they wanted to do for Dungeons and Dragons. They are trying to bring that model of salesmanship forward to the populace of Magic the Gathering. They want to sell you five card boosters, three card boosters, one card boosters, individual special foil, twinkle pack, amazing retro art frame, backwards flip with nachos and cheese on the side as a side dip. Whatever it takes to get into your wallet. And that makes you as the player responsible for your own money. You have to decide, is that microtransaction worth it? What cards are going to be in there that justify that cost? Why could they not have combined that with the regular product and given us the same product price? Nothing. Nothing is stopping them from doing that. And that's where my brain starts to go sometimes. I start getting angry about it as much as I am excited for March of the Machine. And Aftermath looks good by itself. It just does. That's, that's me getting sucked in just like a lot of you would be. I'm looking at it saying, wow, one box isn't going to hurt. I want to get one for the channel. I, I want to crack some packs and look at it. But my, my critical nature of looking at prices and value tells me it's a ripoff and and not by a little bit guys like a serious ripoff like they're taking your money and giving you the product right oh you get this product but it should have been with the first product they should have been joined together just like i feel when i play call of duty and i see those microtransactions come up there should be ways of winning them or awards for doing certain missions or certain kill streaks but they don't do that do they they don't say, oh, if you if you do this and this and this, if you attend a certain amount of events at your at your local LGS, you can win a pack. You can win packs of these and we'll send them out. No, 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 no. They've got to suck the wallet dry and just put it aside. And again, my brain, even now as I'm talking to you guys, my brain says, hey, it's still a pretty good product. You, you get the individual cards. There's no chaff. There's no tons of tons of buildup of cards sitting on the sides. You have a lot less left over. There's going to be a smaller box. It's easier to store. I get all that. And my brain still tells me at the end of that conversation with itself, remember though, all of that should have been in the original product. Don't buy it. Because if we buy it, it's only going to get worse. If we buy this product, just like the 30th anniversary, if you buy it, and I realize this video will not get a lot of views, guys. I understand only some of you are going to watch it. But if you buy it, they're going to do it again. And it'll get worse. And the more successful it is, the more they realize they can, they can pull tooth and nail to get it done. To do it again. But in a worse way. Five cards becomes three, becomes two, becomes one, becomes a 12 pack. Like The collector boxes are just as bad. For that price point, I don't care if it has a special foiling. I know some people might, but it doesn't appeal to me at all. I just want to play the game with some cool cards, have some fun with friends, because at the end of the day, it's still a game, and I've got to protect my money. I worked hard to get it. I work really hard at multiple jobs to keep my money and try to pay my family's bills, have a little bit of fun, and enjoy this hobby that I love, Magic the Gathering. But this is why I end up chasing reserveless cards, because I feel, I feel safe. I feel protected. And knowing that they could reprint these, knowing that there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee in the box. Right? It just, it bothers me guys. And that's where things will, will play out. Because most people will not, cannot think about it in a critical way. 
Players cannot look at it that way. The populace of the world doesn't look at things this way. Consumerism is everywhere. Everywhere. For anyone who's bought a couple of boxes of magic, you probably have all the cards you need to ever play the game. But there's always the, I want more. I want the newest one. I want the latest fashion. I want the Gap, the Club Monaco. I want Zellers. I want Kmart. Right? Walmart. I, w- I want to move up to the Bay. I guess we got Bay here in Canada. You guys have Woolworth, Woolco, whatever fancy places you're going to go to in the end of the day. Saks Fifth Avenue. I don't care. I want more. And since people's brains think that way, they will do dumb things. They will do things that are not rational and they will just spend money. That gambler's premium is, it's right there waiting for people just to say, hey, I can, I can reach out and grab it. And that's what they're going to do. And they won't look at it saying, this should have been the original prize. I mean, the set size wouldn't be much different. You'd shave off a card or two here, or maybe have like a, a little, you know, put some of these cards in an intro deck. Maybe one or two cards only found in the bundle pack, but they, they didn't splice the cards out that way. They made an entire separate separate supplemental product that they're going to charge you full price for, basically. And you're not, I mean, it's a smaller set. Like I said, I get all the things that make it look cute and neat, and there might be some amazing cards inside, but... I just know that they're giving it to me and I don't like them taking my money for no reason. So before you out there, the fans of the channel, somebody who just had me stopping by today and watching up to this point, if you decide to buy these products, that is entirely up to you. But go in with your eyes open and understand what you're looking at. It is a form of microtransaction. It is allowing them to break off a large product into smaller products and sell them at higher price points. It looks like it's a few bucks cheaper than a a normal draft box, which may attract people. Hey, it's a little bit cheaper and I have no chaff inside. Yeah, but then you still gotta go get the singles that you want from March of the Machine. Like there's still gonna be things you have to chase down no matter which way you go. Just go in with your eyes wide open. Don't be tricked and fooled. Value your money like you should. You worked really hard to get it. It, don't treat it frivolously. Tough times can always be around the corner. I have no problem with somebody enjoying a hobby and spending it. I do it all the time. But just because I look around right now and I see all these other YouTube channels talking about, um, you know, Aftermath, this is what the set contains. This is the stuff we're going to be seeing. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. They're not talking about the fact that it should have been combined in another set. They're not talking about the fact that it's kind of a ripoff for the value for dollar that you're spending to get the product. It's almost like they all work for Wizards of the Coast and they don't they don't give you like the information you need to know, which is the value for dollar for the game you're about to play. It's not like it's not non-investable. Like you can make some money back on this game other than other board games you may play. Yeah, there's some return for dollar as long as they don't reprint it to zero. And all these other channels that like hype it and talk about it as an amazing thing. Yes, it's going to be a good set. Yes, it's going to be fun, but you need to cover the other section of it, which is it's going to take a lot of your money to play this game. It's going to take a lot. You're going to sacrifice a lot and you're going to lose about 80% of the money you invest in this game all the way up to 95%. But if you enjoy the game, you're going to have a good time. So products like this, be very critical in nature of the product. Be careful with your money because you know what? It is just a game and I just don't, I don't see that and it drives me nuts sometimes. Anyway, thanks for being here guys. Slam some comments down that comment section. Yes, I know I'm being a little bit like, ah, today, a little bit, ah, pitchfork up in hand. Let's go get Shrek and go chase him out of town. I get it, but it is a good product and I find myself being, looking at going, that's going to be fun, but I just know when I look at it and take a critical look, it doesn't matter. It's the value behind it and how much it costs you to play for it and being able to wait a year and get this stuff on sale, which is what's been happening with multiple products. Multiple products. Now, you just see it a year later going on sale. You can wait for it if you're not going to play in a tournament. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for being here today. Can't wait to read your comments in the comment section and thanks for hanging out with the Mox Man. We'll see you guys tomorrow. This video today is brought to you by the fantastic patrons of the Moxman. Without the support I get from my patrons, this channel wouldn't even exist anymore. So a big shout out and thank you to each and every one of them for their hard earned money that they put toward my channel. Okay, you stuck around. Here I am pacing, all pent up because I watched a couple of videos because I felt like it. 
I had a longer lunch break because I worked extra hours. And yes, the coffee's in hand because it's a little bit later at night. Yes, I've walked the dog. Yes, the dinner's in the oven for the family. And guys, like, you know they could do it. You look at all kinds of other set sizes at the 280, 290 card set, and you're like, they should just combine these two together to give us the full story. But nope. They had to try something new to generate more revenue for the company. And I get that. Like, the thing is, I understand it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yes, something got my eye. That was me, like, squinting up. I get why they do it. I understand the company dynamics of how it works, okay? Um, you know, rising costs are everywhere. But couldn't they have done it a different way? Couldn't they have given us... A different way of putting this product together. Couldn't you have had box topper packs that had epilogue boosters inside, right? Couldn't you have um, charged five, ten bucks more a box and put one epilogue booster in each one, and or maybe one special type of epilogue booster in every ten boxes or twenty boxes? There is other ways they could have mixed this up. Charged a five, six buck premium on it, made it a little bit more of an expensive product because of the special epilogue boosters inside but diluted the overall chain of events, which would raise the price of this product when you combine them into a premium price product like Lord of the Rings. They just don't think we see it. Those two boxes together make a premium product, right? That's, that's what it is. And I can see with my eyes and I just go, no, not gonna happen. I'll buy singles, of course, but I'll, I'll just, like, I had stuff coming in the mail from TCG that I ordered during our, our buyout stuff. I'll put a video together, guys. I have a, a buyout that I bought. I consider those far better deals than than what we just went through. I'm sorry. It's. I look at it and I know it's going to be a good set. That's what gets me too. I know it's going to be a good set. But I know the better value for buck are cards that I've never been able to afford and always wanted, which are on the reserve list. Cards I will play with for the rest of my life versus cards I know will cycle out, get reprinted or repeated so often that there's no point because a better card comes out. And yeah, my computer's beeping at me now. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Critical thinking is what I would like to see in the comments section to let me know you guys have actually thought about what I've said, came up with some thoughts that either agree with me or dare to disagree, and we'll see what happens. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Protect your money.